Hey goodies all first, me and the whiteboard again. And today we're gonna go over how the ignition system works on your car. And to be clear, we're not just talking about your ignition lock cylinder and your ignition switch, but rather the system that's responsible for both producing and timing the spark at the end of your spark plug. And the way I'm gonna explain it to you is to first explain the, how the system works on this whiteboard. And then we're gonna go over to this 95280 Camry and I'm gonna show you how each component looks on the car itself. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, basically your ignition system starts at your ignition lock cylinder and your ignition switch. When you get in the car, turn the key to the on position, you're going to get 12 volts coming out of your ignition switch. So again, you get in your car, turn the key, and then you get 12 volts coming out of one of these wires at the end of your ignition switch. And from there, the 12 volts goes to your ignition coil. And the job of your ignition coil is to turn these 12 volts into something much higher, in fact, tens of thousands of volts higher, because that's what's required to be able to jump the gap at the end of your spark and create a spark. Now as far as I know, this is how your ignition coil manages to do this. Uh, when you get 12 volts coming into your ignition coil, inside the coil itself, you're gonna have two sets of winding wires. You're gonna have a primary set, which is in red here, and then you're gonna have a secondary set. And the 12 volt is gonna come and travel through your primary set, out of your ignition coil, and into this triggering device. And the way this works is that when you get 12 volts coming through your primary set and out of your ignition coil, you, got your, you have a magnetic field inside here. And then when this 12 volts gets disrupted, the collapse of that magnetic field is going to induce, induce a high current charge inside your secondary set. And since you got many more winds, the wire that's part of your secondary set has many more winds compared to the primary set, you're going to have a much higher voltage that's going to come out of this uh, secondary set and at the end of your ignition coil that goes to your distributor. Now the way that this tone voltage or this magnetic field inside your primary set gets disrupted it's going to vary based on your ignition system. This ignition system that I got drawn out here, this is for uh, older cars where the triggering device or, what the, or the device that disrupts this 12 volts is a mechanical device. Basically you're going to have a gear at the end of your camshaft and then you're going to have a lever here and then you're going to have two contact points right here. So the 12 volt comes here and meets up here uh, with these two contact points and as the camshaft turns, like if you have a four cylinder car, you're going to have four, four points uh, on this gear and as this uh, gear turns, it's going to push up on this lever and that's going to detach the two contact points and that's how you get the dis disruption on a setup like this. Now I've drawn these two separately, but these are basically, they're on top of each other. You get the, at the end of your camshaft, you're gonna have this gear uh, that's attached to the end of your camshaft, and then your distributed cap and rotor is gonna be on top of this. Now let's just show it to you on the car, it'll be easier. Uh, well, here's a look at your our, uh, ignition coil. Now your ignition coil is gonna be always easy to find. You can just uh, follow the cable that comes out of the center of your distributor cap, and follow that, and it always leads to your ignition coil. And here's a connector for our ignition coil. Don't mind this, this is not part of your ignition coil. As you can see, it's got two wires. One is gonna supply the 12 volts that goes through your primary circuit, and then the other one is gonna, is gonna be the 12 volts that leaves the primary circuit inside your ignition coil and goes to your triggering device. Now this car does not have a mechanical triggering device. It has an electronic triggering device, uh, which we'll get to after we go through this. But basically, if you had a mechanical triggering device, it would be sitting here. You would be sitting right here at the back of this uh, distributor rotor. You'd have the two contact points here, and then there'd be a lever back there, and there'd be a ge gear in the center just underneath this uh, rotor. As the gear or the camshaft would turn, it would turn the gear. The gear would push up on that lever, uh, causing a disruption to the flow, and that disruption is what causes your ignition coil to work. And then as your ignition coil discharges that high voltage, it travels through here, this cable, to the center of your distributor cap and from your rotor is going to travel through these contacts inside the end of your uh, distributor cap through the corresponding spark plug wire and then from there to the corresponding spark plug and then that's how you get your spark. All right, next we go to this type of ignition system which is actually what we have on this uh, 95 Toyota Camry. Now on this system, much similar to the previous system, you get 12 volts coming out of your ignition switch when you put, turn the key to the on position. It goes through your ignition coil. The ignition coil obviously works the same but the triggering device is different on this uh, type of ignition system and in fact it's the disruption of this uh, 12 volts so the primary circuit is controlled by your ignition cord control module or igniter or even sometimes just by your ECU. Or in other words, in this system your ignition coil is controlled electronically versus this older system which was controlled mechanically. And the way your uh, ignition control module knows 
when each cylinder is at top dead center, so that it can disrupt this uh, 12 volts that's coming into it, uh, it knows that by uh, your crankshaft position sensor and or your camshaft position sensor. And here's the crankshaft position sensor off a of Subaru. And basically the way these sensors work is that uh, they're usually located just on top of your uh, crankshaft gear, which is not to be confused with your harmonic balancer. This is where the timing belt goes. And as this turns, these notches here are going to stimulate this uh, crankshaft position sensor, creating a voltage. And that signal is going to travel from your crankshaft position sensor and your camshaft position sensor back to your ignition control module, telling it exactly where each uh, cylinder is. And when it's at top dead center, uh, that's, your, that's when your ignition control module disrupts its 12 volts, causing the, the high voltage from your secondary coils inside your ignition coil to go from your ignition coil to your distributor cap and rotor, from there to the corresponding spark plug and causing a spark. And here's a look at a camshaft position sensor and as you can see it's pretty much the same as a crankshaft position sensor and uh, it's located just behind your camshaft gear and as this gear turns it's going to stimulate the sensor causing it to send a voltage signal back to your ignition control module. Now I should say that depending on your car's make and model, sometimes there's no camshaft position sensor, kind of like we got on this 95 Toyota Camry with a 2.2 liter engine. Uh, and it, you know, the ignition control module only works off the crankshaft position sensor. But even if you do have both sensors, generally speaking, the crankshaft position sensor is the primary or the major sensor. Uh, in fact, uh, in my experience, sometimes when the camshaft position sensor is not working correctly, the car still gets spark and still runs. The engine is going to run really rough, but uh, it still runs. But other times when the crankshaft position sensor is bad, you just uh, it's just not going to run. You're just not going to get any spark at all. All right, so back to the car again. And on this car, our ignition control module is just right next to our uh, ignition coil. So here's our ignition coil and here's our ignition control module. Or in our case, as you can see, it's called an igniter. All right, so on this system, when you turn the key to the on position, you're gonna get 12 volts coming into your ignition coil through these, uh, one of these wires. And in our case, it's gonna be this white wire. And then when it travels through your primary coil, it's gonna come out through this black and uh, red wire. And from there, it's gonna travel to our igniter, which is right here. See the same color, uh, black and red wire? That's the wire that comes from our ignition coil. And these other wires, one of them is probably from your crankshaft position sensor. And then when your uh, igniter realizes uh, the particular cylinder to be top dead center, it's gonna disrupt this 12 volts from this wire, which is gonna cause the primary coil inside here to collapse, creating that magnetic field and inducing that uh, high voltage uh, current from your secondary coil that's gonna come out of here and travel from there to the top of your uh, distributor cap and again from there to your distributor rotor and then out at the tip and then from there to the corresponding contact inside your distributor cap and then again out the corresponding spark plug wire to the corresponding spark plug and hopefully creating a spark there. All right, just a few things before I wrap this video up. Uh, your ignition control module or your igniter is sometimes located in many different parts. Again, it could be just part of your uh, electronic control unit or your computer. Uh, other times it's its own unit like we have here and then sometimes it's part of your uh, distributor assembly. And something else that some of you may be wondering is that since the voltage that's coming out of your ignition coil is 10 to 40,000 volts, how come no one ever dies when working on their car? And that is because uh, this voltage, even though it's super high, the, the amps behind this is uh, you know a very small amount, it's very minute and it's just not enough to uh, harm a human body. Now you could still get zapped by this, you know, if you're working on your car while it's running, maybe you pull a spark plug wire or something like that, you're gonna get zapped and it's gonna sting quite a bit. It's not gonna kill you, but it's not gonna be pleasant either. In fact, I would say it would be pretty similar to getting tasered. Uh, and I know that from experience because I've been tasered quite a few times by quite a few different women. Now the two ignition systems we just went over are uh, for older vehicles or vehicles that are equipped with a distributor. Most modern vehicles, they're distributorless and everything is electronically controlled. And if you want to learn how those work, then I suggest you stay tuned because that's what my next video is going to be on. I'll put a link to it right here on this side of the screen so you can click on it along with some other videos that you may find interesting. Also, there'll be some links in the description box. But if you found anything in this video useful, just give this one a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.